Welcome to this, our latest Astley Media Project Positive Tea webcast. Today, we're in conversation with Exeter rugby legend and sports bar owner, Gareth Steenson. Gareth talks to us about the victory over Bristol, the intensity of the renewed season, and the chief stars of the future. Enjoy. Morning, Steenson, how are you doing? Morning, Mike, you well? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Really good, really good. Are you? Yeah, not too bad. A little sore and stiff, but, you know, I think that's more to do old age, you know? <laughs> Well, th thanks for giving up your time today. I know it's your first day off for a, a long time. Um, season's back in full swing and it's relentless, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like, to, to be honest with you, I don't really know what day of the week it is at the minute. Um, uh, yeah, we literally get up, get our app done, and then we travel into Sandy Park and we prep for a game. And um, It changes unbelievably quick because usually we get a full week to prep for matches. But recently now, it's literally you play a game, you come in, you know, we're we're travelling back the night after night of games and we're in it like three, four hours later. <laughs> and then uh, you're prepping for another team. So um it's good because everyone's getting to play, which is great. And um, you know, we're going all right with it at the minute. Oh, going great guns. I mean, let's talk about that Bristol game. What a what a match that was, and you you celebrated at the end as if you'd won the cup. Yeah, no, look, to be honest, it was the first game I'd played in six months or so. So, you know, it was it was always gonna feel a little bit like that. Um it was it was brilliant. I, I was just delighted for a lot of the young guys, you know, a lot of fellas, boys now who who've been in around the squad for a long time, a lot of young guys, a lot of new guys came in and they got to play in a pressured game against a very good Bristol team away from home and they put in great performances and to nick a game like that the way we did at the end, um was great because we had control of the match and they were always going to come back, Bristol. Um, and it was about how the guys went from being in such a good position to being behind to then go and win it again. Just shows good good things for the future. And, um, you know, it was great to be part of it and see those young fellas perform as well as they did. Yeah, do you think the intensity of the games and this rotation that's having to happen now is 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 going to be a good thing in the long run? I think it is. It's going to uh, develop a lot of young guys. We're going, you're going to see guys um, who probably wouldn't have got a chance um, to play um, if it was just like a traditional season, um, which is brilliant because, like again, like I said, the development of these guys is just going to fast track them, and it means now that we are in a position, especially the way we're going at the minute, that the squad is in. You know, we're confident that we can pick guys if some boys get injured and we're missing fellas. With no problem throwing the guys in, um, and that's the way it should be, and that's kind of what I was thinking would happen with this uh, after the lockdown period when we came back. It was going to come down to the best squad, um, and I'm delighted now that people are actually getting to see what how good the extra chief squad is. Yes, there's an incredibly talented, um, you know, what they would say. Well, is there such a thing as a first fifteen now? I don't know. Um, you know, we've got a great group. And it's great that we can select from a, a, a big number of boys. Yeah, and, and I think what's also impressive is the fitness levels, which really shows that you guys during lockdown just just kept that momentum up, didn't you? Yeah, no, it is. You know, it's credit to a lot of the fellas. It was a lot of hard work, you know. Um, granted, now that, that game against Bristol, it was definitely the last 20 minutes. Uh, it was testing, uh, a lot of ball and play time, but, you know, the guys came through it real well. And, um, you know, fellas have worked incredibly hard because there's big rewards. You know, we're only got, I think when we sat down and we said there was like 10 weeks and um, what you can achieve in 10 weeks, you know, you're never going to get that opportunity to achieve something like that in 10 weeks. So everyone's given everything for it. Um, and then we'll worry about next season when next season comes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of these, these young players, does that make your job more difficult as a senior player on the pitch in terms of your leadership role? Um. Slightly, but um, I don't tend to try and do anything different than I normally would have done. Um, you know, it's 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 um, there's some guys there who like likes of Josh Hodge had never played a game or um, for Chiefs. You know, he played in a trial game. You know, so for him to come in and perform the way he did, he's still got a lot to learn in the style of rugby we play. Um, because even in training, we're very much just prepping to get ready for games. It's very difficult to. Naturally, when you come in, you get a full pre-season um, and you get up to speed with what exactly we do. Um, and traditionally, fellas come in and they do take a little time to get moulded into the Chiefs' way of playing. Uh, you just don't come in and play, really. Um, and I think 
those guys getting the and they would those guys getting the play in these games now they're going to be fast tracked. There's no way league games, so these guys can't even get a game in that. So mm-hmm. it's different. It's difficult for them, but you're seeing them on the big screen, big stage doing it, and it's great to see. Yeah, yeah. Any stars of the future, for you, Steno? Yeah, we have we, we have got some really talented boys. You've seen you've seen a good few of them there the other night. I think Josh is going to be. Josh looks good. Um, the potential that he has, you know, Tommy Wack came on, um, and he's another young kid who's performed really well. You know, um, Harvey Skinner coming through as well in, in at the ten position. I think there's a kid who's got a little bit about him. Um, you know, just need a year or two of getting playing, and um, we'll see how they go. But you know, like I could need, I could rhyme off a lot of fellas. Um, some some names that you probably know of, um, but there is definitely some talent coming through. Yeah, yeah, and that was evident uh, at the Bristol game. Clearly, we're recording this just before the uh, just before the Worcester game, um, so we we don't know the results of that yet. But let's let's hope that's a victory. Yeah. What, <laughs> what's it like playing in the in, in the empty stadiums? Um, so I've only got on the field, um, you know, the one game against Bristol. I think when you go away from home, it's a massive difference because you can notice it. Normally, when a try is scored, it's um, you know the crowd erupts and there's a big explosion of noise and you have that sort of emotional energy that comes at you. Um, I know whenever we, especially the other night, now whenever we probably went behind um, after being in such a good position of leading, um, you didn't have that feeling of this is all doom and gloom a little bit. Um, it was more like mm, this is okay. Like all you could hear was the Bristol bench going mad, which wasn't too bad because it's a big stadium. Um, and then you know, but you definitely felt it. I think the lads were saying when they were here, uh, at Sandy Park. Um, the biggest thing is you obviously get the adrenaline of the, the crowd never and everything going. But when you're in the game and you're playing, you're in the play, you're playing the game. You're not overly focused too much on what's going on. It's, like you, it's weird you get engrossed in it a little bit because we're used to training in an empty stadium. So um, I don't want to say it's like a glorified training session because that's completely wrong because it's not. Um, but it doesn't feel too dissimilar to when we train. Um, you know, you just don't get that buzz. It's, it's funny whenever um, you watch it back on the TV and you hear the, you hear the noise of the, the, obviously BT or whatever put it on um, because we don't hear that <laughs> and it's quite strange. Yeah, I've never never heard so many commentators apologise so much for the language actually. Oh well, <laughs> unfortunately, that's what happens, <laughs> and um, you know it's going to be picked up more. Um, and there's not a lot we can do about that. Um, you know, you're in the heat of the battle, you're in the moment. Yeah. You know, and if I swore, I apologise as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So per- personally, Gareth, you've extended your contract to the end of the season, so you, you, you're going to see it out. Um, what what comes after that for you? So hopefully we make the final uh, of the prem. And that all goes according to plan, and then I'll get a week or two off, and then I'll be back into the coach's office with a whistle. So I'll be coming in um, as kit and coach um, for the whole of the club. So that's going to be working alongside um, the academy guys, um, the women. Uh, I'll be in working with the women's side. I've already been up with them a couple of times, and uh, I'll be in with the first team. We're just working in, on an individual basis, you know, trying to get guys up to speed, everybody up to speed with their kicking. And then with the, uh, working alongside Ali uh, with the first team, with the assistant, uh, him as, as a back coach. So it's all quite, um, I'm excited about it. You know, um, you know you're stepping away from uh, obviously playing. And instead of turning left into the players' changing room, I'll be turning right into the coach's changing room or coach's room. So um, it's exciting because, you know, I think one thing lockdown's probably showed me that, um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed – you know, and I enjoy the aspect of seeing other guys performing really well. Um, you know, and going out and seeing the likes of Joe performing the way he's performing, Harvey Skinner, the way he's developed, um, and even Jack Walsh, Walsh coming in. You know, these are guys coming in at the ten position. It's great to see them performing the way they are in training, and you know, now getting a chance to play. And it's great because it just shows where the club's going, and I kind of want to still be part of it. Yeah, yeah. No, it'd be good to see you in that role, and I'm sure the club will, will benefit through that. Um, but how do you feel about becoming sort of poacher turned gamekeeper? Uh, you know, that's going to mean a different relationship between you and the boys. I mean, Julian Salvi had to do that quite well, a bit, didn't it's, he? You know, it's it's a strange one, Mark. If I'm being honest with you, because you know, you get to the age I'm at, I'm 36. Um, I'm older than Julian Salvi, so you know, and he's coaching the boys. 
It's a strange one because um, it's something I've probably over the last couple of years made a bit of a conscious effort to try and not distance myself totally from the boys, but it's, you know, it's definitely difficult, not difficult, but different when I walk into the changing room, you know, I'm, I'm more hanging out with the coaching staff than I would be the younger fellas. Um, you know, it's difficult because if you look at, you know, no disrespect, I'm 16 years older than some of these guys, you know, nearly a whole school life ahead of people, you know, so it's, it's just the way you are at where you're at in life. And, um, you know, I seem to have more in common with the with the coaching team. So, um, look, I'm still very much involved, throw myself in uh, as much as I can with the players, the players. And but I do, I do think whenever the time comes, I, look, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. It'll be difficult to make the the transition across, I no doubt. But I'm not completely disappearing from it, and um, I think I've got a chance to play this season out. Um, you know, with and play with the guys that I'm going to be working with, coaching-wise. So I've seen, I've been in the environment, and then I'll be in a different look at it. So, but it's, it, look, I don't know until I'm there. And, you know, I just want to enjoy what I have left of my playing days. And then uh, I'm sure there'll be the odd testimonial game I might pop up in and, you know, get a run around. I'm sure you'll stop a few beers with the boys after a, after a match. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. But speaking of beers, um, you, away from the rugby field, you, you're a, Fully fledged businessman now with your own sports bar, the the standoff in in Exeter. Um, how's 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 that journey been sort of during lockdown and, and coming out of it? Uh, well, I suppose the first thing was it was very frustrating at the start because we had so many great plans in place. We had um, so we had a new menu all ready to launch. Uh, we're in the middle of Six Nations. We were um, getting noticed for being like the place to go for live music, and then all of a sudden, bang. You know, so everyone was shut down, um, and it just went quiet. You know, like everybody, most other businesses, we were just literally there was nothing we could do. Uh, but then actually getting the start up again, we've kind of we've kind of done it in a slow, gradual sort of way. We we sort of said yes, whatever the date was, I think it was back in July, we were allowed to open pubs again. We said we'd go just for the weekends. Nobody would know. Nobody had a clue what it would be like. It came, it went quite well. Um, and then with rugby starting again, that was a massive thing for us in sport in general because, you know, there is a, a thrive for people to sit with one another and enjoy sport. And obviously we've got a lot of guidelines we've got to go through. And I think it was very difficult for our staff initially when we first opened up because they were, you know, getting frustrated that they couldn't actually do their job where, you know, you stand at a bar and order a beer and have a conversation with one another. They ended up just becoming like, glorified waiters really who were just cleaning the place and you know that's frustrating for them but you know they've got on with the job incredibly well and we're incredibly um, indebted to what they did and um, the way the place is now it's set up really well we've now started our eight out to help out scheme we're going to start from the first of September um, right, and we're going to run it right through to the end of September I think um, we'll be good because we have got a great dishes we've got a great chef and we're kind of known just for going in and having a beer um, but we want to get people in and say, look, you can come, have, enjoy good food, um, have a beer, and hopefully if the live sport's on, enjoy the live sport. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, and there's a great atmosphere in there, and it's worth going into just uh, just to look at the shirt collect, shirts collection, including your, your premiership winning shirt. Yeah, no, it, there's a couple in there. Um, I've kind of forgot. I've got boots in there and all these sorts of things, old testimonial shirts. I've been very lucky with uh, what the guys have donated to me. So um, we'll have to see if there's any more I can go and get. <laughs> I mean, in, in terms of dealing with all of that, is there anything you took from your experience on the pitch that helped? I think, uh, you know, just uh, in general, you know, it's a team. Um, that's the biggest thing was business. It's one thing I've noticed from going in from a rugby world because it's the only thing I've really known is being involved in a team and the way the rugby world. That's the best thing about rugby is um, I can't do someone else's job. Like I can't go and be a prop. Just can't do it. Um, and you know, vice versa. So understanding whenever uh, we would go into a business world, what people's strengths are and what they can and can't bring to the party, um, and that's a, a massive thing I think being able to delegate and allow people to be, you know, as good as they can be in that position. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing we've noticed. Um, you know, we've got guys in there who do incredible things and that's, that's the biggest thing. 
yeah, yeah. I've, I've asked um, everybody this question um, during these interviews, but um, what have you learned about yourself during lockdown? Um, that I love a routine. <laughs> Absolutely love routine. Um, I am a man of it and a man of habit. And uh, I think the biggest thing too is just um, being able to switch off was a massive thing for me. Like, I get stressed quite easily, quite quickly um, with certain things. And I feel like I can get in a position where a lot of things will be feel on top of me quite a lot. Um, and not having a lot of pressures, not having to worry about my phone going mad all the time. It was literally, so my days would entail, the only thing I had to worry about was getting up and making sure the kids did their homeschooling and I did my fitness work. Mm. And that was it. That's all I really had to worry about. Um, and that kind of allowed me to sort of take stock a little bit and understand, look, these are the better things in life. And I felt better for it as well. Um, but I do like being on the edge and I like being busy. So being sat down for an hour in front of the television, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> so I have to be doing, uh, whether that be, like I said, out, outside on a, in the home gym or whatever it is, or I've got to be doing some right cycling and taking the kids out. You know, I can't just sit. So, um, yeah, I like routine. So that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Yeah, even if that means returning from Manchester in the early hours of the morning and then getting back to the training ground uh, first thing. Yeah, that no, that was difficult, um, you know. Uh, but that's that's what we're in now. So we've kind of made peace with to know that that's what it's going to be for ten weeks. And if we can perform, like I said, the rewards we can get out of that. If if I can sit there in ten weeks' time and um, have, be having a conversation with you and saying we're a Heineken Cup champions and. Premiership champions, sure, wouldn't it all be worth it? Yeah, well, all, all the signs are good. As you said at the beginning, Gareth, you know, the, the young players that are coming through uh, gives a lot of hope. It does, you know, but it's not even that over the next day. It's what's going to come down the line. You know, I definitely think there's bigger things ahead for Exeter Chiefs. I think yeah, as a club, we're in an unbelievable position. Um, we just need to get people back to coming back in. You know, I think it's just frustrating for everyone. I think they're talking now about um, getting maybe 4,000 people coming into the Quinns game, uh, their next home game, which is great to see. And I've no doubt that'll go well. Um, once that happens, then who knows, maybe the week after you'll start seeing people coming back into games and that'll be fantastic just to, just for people in general. I think, you know, to be able to come in and enjoy the, the atmosphere and build an atmosphere at rugby grounds. And, um, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, we're, we're all itching for that to happen. So let, let's let's hope that uh, that happens soon. Gareth, look, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate your time because it, it is your day off. Um, so we better let you go and uh, spend some time with your kids. Um, after let, maybe on a golf course, probably as well. But, uh, oh well, yeah, enjoy that as well. Enjoy that as well. Let, yeah. Let's do that. Let's catch up in a, in a few a few weeks time at the end of the season. See see where we are then and. Uh, Hopefully, talk about all the all the celebrations and victories. Yeah, well, not all the celebrations. We keep some of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Brilliant. Thanks, Gareth.